Let me paint you the whole picture. Some of the strongest characters are about to fight for the fate of the world, with the story building this confrontation up since chapter 1. As the fight approaches, the narrative starts to heavily favor the protagonists by not only giving us insight about their plans, but also using other characters to highlight another's feats, powers, and personality. All of this is in the service of boosting that said character and elevating the anticipation for the following fight. When the fight eventually does begin, well, everything's actually Actually going according to plan. The villain is on the back foot, seemingly outmatched, and right as it seems like the protagonists will be victorious, a curveball drops. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not talking about Higaruma Yuji vs Sukuna, nor am I talking about Sukuna vs Gojo, or Yuji Yuta vs Sukuna, or Maki vs Sukuna for that matter, because the point is, I'm talking about all of them. If you don't see the problem yet, hold that thought, because we'll get back to it. But first, I have another question to you. What makes Madara, Aizen, and Sinbad so satisfying? Well, it's nothing Sukuna lacks, that's for sure, down to even some plot armor. But what makes these three, especially Madara, so good is that he is, by all means, a force to be reckoned with. Is that so? You know what I was like during my glory days, do you? He can decimate millions in an instant and make any character a laughing stock. His power and self-confidence makes Madara an immensely memorable and favorable character. Same goes for Aizen, that methodical, ingeniously overpowered character needed plot armor to be stopped. And in a way, same can be applied to Madara. Sinbad, on the other hand, despite not lacking confidence, power, or charisma, was able to round out his villain arc in a satisfactory manner. He was never stopped in a way that seemed convenient or convoluted. All things considered, it was the perfect villain conclusion. Sukuna could have had the same exact outcome very easily. He, just like these three characters, bent the world around his fingers, decimating characters left and right and reshaping the world itself. Yet, a perfect conclusion never happened. Gojo was supposed to be the end of Sukuna. It would have been the perfect send-off for the King of Curses, down to the symbolic level. This fight was planned since the Hien era, yet plot armor and Gege's insistence on sucking Sukuna off was also prevalent since the Hien era. The situation in JJK has gotten so bad that the tropes are being reused back to back to get the same exact outcome on the same exact character the same exact way. These fights I described are essentially the same, only difference being the victims and the way Sukuna is dressed up in the plot. Firstly, it was the world slash, which Gojo didn't see, but Maki Zenin did, and even dodged it. It was never alluded to before, built up, or even feasible in the situation Sukuna was in. Just fucking look at him. But all of this fighting amounted to Sukuna off-screening the objectively strongest character in Jujutsu Kaisen. This writing has gotten so bad that Gege even destroyed Gojo Gojo's character by using him to suck off Sukuna more. Gojo, known as the most big dick cocky motherfucker in history, said, Yeah, yeah, he was holding back. There's no way I could have beaten him. We bullied Viz Media into changing the official translations to Nah, I'd win, but to what avail? Like, bro, you were, you were the one. You got jumped, but still was gucking him. What do you mean you couldn't? You're an imposter. Give Gojo back, Gege, you shitty fucking cat. This is not Gojo speaking, this is Gege throating. Gojo never would have said anything like this under any circumstance. Yet he does, and his legacy goes from to fucking Among Us memes. The same exact thing happens to Kashimo, down to being off screen. His legacy as the Thunder God was turned into the Waffle Man, the King of Farmers. Next up, Sukuna conveniently receives a cursed item. When he is at max power, even after transforming into his perfect state, when he is no longer holding back in quotations, and after killing the strongest modern sorcerer, Kigi found it necessary to not only give this item to him, but also Sukuna found it necessary to use it. Why? Why do you need this? Why wasn't this given to Sukuna when he was yelling, Daisuke, Mahorakachi? He was already virtually using everything at his disposal against Gojo, yet he didn't get to use this. But that's besides the fact. Despite this item having no business being here, it is here, and it's very bad. 
Higuruma had a contingency plan just in case Gojo lost. His plan was to use judgment and remove Sukuna's slash ability. But conveniently, Sukuna received that item and completely derailed the entire plan, because judgment focuses on the external item first and then the internal skill. But what ticks me off even more is how Higuruma apparently didn't realize that Judgment would take physical weapons first. Why didn't you take this into consideration? You were hailed to be incredibly talented and smart, yet you didn't realize that maybe external weapons will be Judgment's first ever pick. Or how did you not find that out during the cooling games, when virtually every single character was armed with some sort of external weapon? But see what I'm talking about here? It's as if the world itself morphed around Sukuna to not only make Higuruma fucking restarted, but also give Sukuna the perfect counter to the perfect plan. See the issue here? Surely this can't happen a third time, there is no way. It happens a third time. Sukuna is low on cursed energy whilst having brain damage and physical damage. So surely, the next wave, Yuta, should spell his end. And well, it does. Not. Yuta receives tremendous amounts of glazing. He decapitates Kenjutsu with a single strike and he is on his A game. He cranks out his domain expansion and spits in the face of Sukuna by using his own ability against him. He is essentially crippling Sukuna, not allowing him to use two of his hands and his mouth. Yuta is on a fucking roll. But remember when Gojo was also being glazed? Sukuna will soon recover from the brain damage and then he will be able to use his own domain expansion. So Rika, Yuji, and Yuta have to take him down right now. Twin Meteors, get fucked loser. Nothing fucking works, nothing works. Sukuna once again, after being battered, bruised, and seemingly defanged, manages to one-tap all of them! See what I'm talking about? The best possible outcome occurs seemingly out of nowhere for Sukuna over and over and over again. For some people, this might seem like anti-plot armor writing to just go against the main characters, but that's not how that works. This is Sukuna, this is his plot armor, because everything he does is without proper buildup or writing. It goes against every law established in Jujutsu Kaisen. But this, this gets worse. Before we talk about that, let's talk about why Sukuna, despite trying his very hardest, will never be one of the goats like Madara, Uchiha, Aizen, or Sinbad. What makes Madara, Sinbad, and Aizen so good and feared is that they built this godly image without the expense of other important characters or the story. Their character, dialogue, beats, build up, and subtlety is within the realms of the story, and they reach that godlyhood on a solo level. Aizen on the regular belittles his subordinates. These same subordinates, mind you, shit on the main character. But this makes sense, cause if Aizen wasn't powerful enough to belittle them, the Espada would never have followed him to begin with. He would never have commanded their absolute loyalty if he didn't have that power. So it makes sense, that tremendous aura around Aizen was built up the moment Grimjow and Ukiora arrived on the scene. He planned out virtually the entire story, but this as well makes sense, because we get to see his intellect across 300 chapters. Madara shat on the Hokages alone, and this makes sense because we saw what Madara was capable of as a human, let alone as a resurrected, blessed individual with infinite stamina. It makes sense. When Sinbad was born, the first words used to describe his birth was a first grade singularity. Such a fucking amazing name. His prowess as a pig of humanity was described the moment he was born, and subsequently every single time he appeared on screen. The point I'm trying to make here is that when these characters seemingly break the laws of the universe, they don't actually break the laws of the universe, they stick in line with everything that was established throughout the entire story. Except for Madara just used the Susano without eyes. Yeah, but for the most times, it was a one-off thing, because every single other time when he showed to be insanely overpowered, we got hundreds of chapters worth of buildup, not only for Madara, but basically every single character I mentioned here. So when they're insanely overpowered or do something insane, it makes sense. While Sukuna, he just basically moves the goalposts as to how powerful he is on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis. He says he's holding back, but then cries out for Mahoraga's help. He basically is getting ready 
ready to become overpowered now, but then he uses a cursed tool, which just coincidentally comes in his hand the moment he would probably need it the most. Then he gets hit with a guaranteed kill attack, Jacob's Ladder, but that doesn't kill him for a second time now, but that's also whatever. Then he moves the goalpost of how powerful he is again after Yuta and Yuji by saying, Oh, Sukuna was not actually uh, going all out, by the way. And this is said right before he does the black fucking flash. The hardest move to pull off in the entire JJK story against Maki. And then as a result, he basically regenerates all of his cursed energy, rendering every other fight completely obsolete. See what I mean? The world just contorts around Sukuna. And the worst fucking part is, the only person remaining now is Kusakabe, and he is getting the Gojo glazing. Remember that whole segment about how, oh yeah, who is the strongest sorcerer in existence? It's Satoru Gojo. But now we downgrade it to who is the strongest sorcerer among the first grades. This is fucking Kino, I love it, I love it. Oh uh, yeah, Kusakabe gotta cook next chapter, that's for sure.